Where are the aliens? This seemingly simple question has puzzled scientists for decades. The universe is a vast, potentially life-sustaining expanse, yet no extraterrestrial life has reached out to us. Could it be that our cosmic neighborhood is simply too large to traverse? Or perhaps, are we deliberately being ignored by alien civilizations? Or could it be something much more peculiar? Here, we delve into nine strange scientific excuses for why humans haven't found aliens yet. Firstly, the aliens might be hiding in underground oceans. These secret oceans, buried deep within frozen planets, could host life unbeknownst to us. Given that these oceans are shielded from hostile surface conditions, life could evolve undisturbed. However, the downside is, we may not be able to detect such life simply by observing their planets. Secondly, the aliens could be imprisoned on super-Earths. These are planets with a mass up to 10 times greater than Earth's. While these planets could support life, their high escape velocity could render space travel and rocket launches almost impossible, leaving any potential alien life trapped. Thirdly, we might be looking in the wrong places because all aliens could be robots. Given the rapid pace of technological advancement, it's plausible that any alien society that has invented radio would have developed artificial intelligence within a few centuries. Therefore, instead of scanning the cosmos for biological life, we should perhaps be searching for machine life. The reasons why we haven't found alien life yet could range from them being trapped in subterranean oceans or on super-Earths, to them being fully evolved artificial intelligence that we are not looking for. The universe is a vast and complex place, and the search for extraterrestrial life is a puzzle that continues to baffle us. So, the next time you look up at the night sky and wonder, where are the aliens? Remember, the answers may be as strange and varied as the universe itself. Any alien society that invents radio so we can hear them within a few centuries, they've invented their successors. Shostak said at the Dent Space Conference in San Francisco in 2016. And I think that's important because the successors are machines. A truly advanced alien society may be completely populated by super intelligent robots, Shostak said, and that should inform our search for aliens. Instead of focusing all our resources on finding other habitable planets, perhaps we should also look to places that would be more attractive to machines, say places with lots of energy, like the centers of galaxies. We're looking for analogs of ourselves, Shostak said, but I don't know that that's the majority of the intelligence in the universe. Furthermore, we've already found aliens, but are too distracted to realize it. Thanks to pop culture, the word alien probably makes you envision a spooky humanoid with a big, bald head. That's fine for Hollywood, but these preconceived images of E.T. could sabotage our search for alien life, a team of psychologists from Spain wrote earlier this year. In a small study, the researchers asked 137 people to look at pictures of other planets and scan the images for signs of alien structures. Hidden among several of these images was a tiny man in a gorilla suit. As the participants hunted for what they imagined alien life to look like, only about 30% noticed the gorilla man. In reality, aliens probably won't look anything like apes. They may not even be detectable by light and sound waves, the researchers wrote. So what does this study show us? Basically, our own imagination and attention span limit our search for extraterrestrial sea. If we don't learn to broaden our frames of reference, we could miss the gorilla staring us in the face. And maybe humans will kill all the aliens, or already have. The closer we get to finding aliens, the closer we get to destroying them. That's one likely eventuality anyway, said theoretical physicist Alexander Berezin. Here's his thinking. Any civilization capable of exploring beyond its own solar system must be on a path of unrestricted growth and expansion. And as we know on Earth, that expansion often comes at the expense of smaller, in-the-way organisms. Berezin said this me-first mentality probably wouldn't end when alien life is finally encountered, assuming we even notice it. What if the first life that reaches interstellar travel capability necessarily eradicates all competition to fuel its own expansion? Berezin wrote in a paper posted in March to the preprint journal rxeve.org. I am not suggesting that a highly developed civilization would consciously wipe out other life forms. Most likely, they simply won't notice. The same way a construction crew demolishes an anthill to build real estate because they lack incentive to protect it. Whether humans are the ants or the bulldozers in this scenario remains to be seen. 
And also maybe the aliens triggered climate change and died. The closer we get to finding aliens, the closer we get to destroying them. That's one likely eventuality anyway, said theoretical physicist Alexander Berezin. Here's his thinking. Any civilization capable of exploring beyond its own solar system must be on a path of unrestricted growth and expansion. And as we know on Earth, that expansion often comes at the expense of smaller, in-the-way organisms. Berezin said this me-first mentality probably wouldn't end when alien life is finally encountered, assuming we even notice it. What if the first life that reaches interstellar travel capability necessarily eradicates all competition to fuel its own expansion, Berezin wrote in a paper posted in March to the preprint journal argzeev.org. I am not suggesting that a highly developed civilization would consciously wipe out other life forms. Most likely, they simply won't notice. The same way a construction crew demolishes an anthill to build real estate because they lack incentive to protect it. Whether humans are the ants or the bulldozers in this scenario remains to be seen. Furthermore, the aliens triggered climate change and died. File another excuse under the aliens are dead already category. The universe may be teeming with hospitable planets, but there's no guarantee they'll stay that way long enough for life to evolve. According to a 2016 study from Australia National University, wet, rocky planets like Earth very unstable when they start their careers. If any alien life hopes to evolve and thrive on such a world, it has a very limited window, a few hundred million years, to get the ball rolling. Between the early heat pulses, freezing, volatile content variation, and runaway greenhouse gases, maintaining life on an initially wet, rocky planet in the habitable zone may be like trying to ride a wild bull. Most life falls off, the study authors wrote. Life may be rare in the universe not because it is difficult to get started, but because habitable environments are difficult to maintain during the first billion years. In addition, dark energy is splitting us apart. The universe is expanding. Slowly but surely, galaxies are moving farther apart, with distant stars appearing dimmer to us, all thanks to the pull of a mysterious, invisible substance that scientists call dark energy. Scientists speculate that within a few trillion years, Dark energy will stretch the universe so much that Earthlings will no longer be able to see the light of any galaxies beyond our closest cosmic neighbors. That's a scary thought. If we don't explore as much of the universe as possible before then, such investigations may be lost to us forever. The stars become not only unobservable, but entirely inaccessible. Dan Hooper, an astrophysicist at the Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory in Illinois, wrote in a study earlier this year. That means we're on a serious deadline to find and meet any aliens out there, and to keep a step ahead of dark energy, we'll have to expand our civilization into as many galaxies as we can before they all drift away. Of course, fueling that kind of growth won't be easy, Hooper said. It might involve rearranging the stars, may also twist ending. We are the aliens. If you left your house today, you saw an alien. The woman delivering mail? Alien. Your next door neighbor? Nosy alien. Your parents and siblings? Aliens, aliens, aliens. At least that's one implication of the fringe astrobiology theory called the panspermia hypothesis. In a nutshell, the hypothesis says that much of the life we see on Earth today didn't originate here but was seeded here millions of years ago by meteors carrying bacteria from other worlds. Proponents of this theory have variously suggested that octopi, tardigrades, and humans were seeded here from other parts of the galaxy, but unfortunately there's no real evidence to back up any of that. One big counter-argument. If bacteria carrying human DNA evolved on another nearby planet, why haven't we found traces of humanity anywhere besides Earth? Even if this hypothesis turns out to be plausible, it still doesn't help us answer Fermi's nagging question, where is everybody?